Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another episode of Little Modular. Today we will be taking a closer look at this astonishing Filter 8 module by Uranalog. This is a totally new product by Uranalog and it is just incredible. It is the most flexible filter I have ever used. Simply because it provides me with so many flavors and so many colors that no other filter that I'm aware of uh, could compete with it. This filter can scream, it can distort, it can purr, it could give you some classical acid lines, it could talk to you with the vowel-like response, and uh, besides the head, uh, it could also be a great source of CV signals or CV processor and anything in between all those functions at the same time and it is just mind-boggling and if I would have to choose one filter and only filter for my whole system that would be filter 8 and I will prove it to you uh, within course of uh, the video clips I'm about to devote to this beast. So let's just dive right into it and see what's the whole panel about. It does have some features that other filters don't have and it might look intimidating at first, but it's not. At the bottom you have all eight outputs, the whole filter and all the outputs, which are, by the way, available simultaneously at the same time, are based on the core of 24 dB per octave filter, so it's a four slope filter. And all the other responses and outputs are just the derivatives of that core filter. So these are just different slopes and different responses mixed together. And you can actually come up with your own responses if you mix those outside with the aid of an external mixer. So it could get even wilder than it is. So let's take a look at the first row right here. You have just four flavors of the low pass filter, uh, starting from the softest one, which is 6 dB. Then you get the 12 dB per octave, 18 dB and uh, 24 dB, the most aggressive one. And they all sound slightly different. The second row offers different responses. The first one being a one pole high pass filter. The second one is kind of like a band boost with a notch, uh, which sounds really interesting. Then you have a similar filter, but without this boost. And this essentially sounds like a one stage phaser. It's kind of phase shifting, phasey sound, which I'll show you in a second. So it's a high pass with a notch kind of thing. Uh, and the uh, last one is a band pass filter. So these are all the basic shapes and they do sound sometimes even extremely different depending on the configuration you will be using them in. Besides that you have two inputs. I will explain you why there are two inputs later on. This is very useful. Just use any of the inputs, put your signal in here and you get your filtered signal out of those outputs and the strength and polarity of the signal is shown by those LEDs above each of the outputs in real time. But first, before you even try to twist any knobs, you have to decide in what mode you will be operating. There are two basic modes. Low mode, which means you will be generating some LFOs or processing CVs. And then you have the uh, audio range which means that you will be filtering signals or using that as an oscillator because it has the capability of self-oscillating in a really pleasing, nice way, which offers eight simultaneous sine waves shifted 45 degrees to each other. You can also get some different shapes, really aggressive ones, some ramps, some really rectified and exotic ways. I will also show you how to achieve that. At the sides, we have the cutoff frequency knobs. The main course knob set up the basic main frequency, the cutoff frequency of the filter or the pitch of the uh, oscillator. On the left side you have the fine knob to fine tune this right parameter right here so it's more precise. In the center you have the resonance 
knob, which is pretty much self-explanatory. I will only add that here you have this little line drawn on the panel. This sets the mark of self-resonance. If you want to put that into self-resonance mode, so it becomes an oscillator, you just twist that until it reaches approximately three o'clock or this notch right here. Below here we have the attenuverter for the resonance parameter. This is bipolar, so minus, zero, plus, and you can inject some uh, modulation sources in here and I'll encourage you to try traditional CVs as well as audio uh, rate signals actually in all of the inputs here because it's a ton of fun. Uh, besides that on the sides we have two independent frequency modulation circuits. So here you have the uh, exponential FM, which also has the uh, volt per octave. This module, while in oscillator mode, can track easily five octaves cleanly and above. Here you have the linear FM attenuator. By the way, both of these are also bipolar. Uh, here is the input for that uh, circuit. This switch here, AC, helps to get rid of the DC offset because if you are modulating this with external signal, sometimes there might be some uh, really extremely low frequency content and some DC offset that will mess up with the response of the filter. So if you have some problems with the uh, fundamental pitch tracking and, and some other funky behavior while using the uh, linear FM, try to engage this switch. Below here we have another interesting switch. This is a hold circuit. This basically freezes the signal on all of the outputs, which could be really interesting, especially in the uh, low mode, in the uh, CV LFO mode. It just freezes the signal at the given value and this could be also controlled via the gate signal so you can achieve some really cool rhythmical freezing and you can also use that in audio range as well it gives you effect something between fm and sync and oscillator sync so it's a really weird one and below is a really great input that i haven't talked about yet pink is meant to excite this module. So if you strike that with the uh, trigger signal and you'll put the uh, module into self oscillation, it will spit out some nice kicks, bongos, percussive sounds, depending on the output you use and uh, the modulation you apply to the FM buses. So this makes it really easy to ping a filter, which is not always a case. Sometimes you have to really fiddle a lot to excite the filters. This one is extremely easy to excite and the results are short of spectacular. And here we have a last switch. This is called comp for compensation. That's because uh, when you put that into self oscillation mode, all of those outputs are Mm, resonating at different amplitudes and uh, this is many times not desirable so if you want the amplitude on all of those outs to be even you just engage the comp switch for now we will switch that off let's start discovering first of course we will do that by injecting some typical raw signal in my case this is going to be a ramp output of uh, intelligent rubicon and I will go through mix switch by Clavis and attenuate it. That's because if I'll output it at the full pace, this module will saturate and distort, which could be used to advantage. But I want to show you the whole spectra. So first we will just go at the moderate levels so you can just hear pure action of this filter. And then we will try to drive it a bit harder. Let's check out the first softest filter at the uh, minimum resonance. This is the uh, 6 dB per octave one pole. At the moderate input signal. And now I will drive it. You can hear it becomes more aggressive. Ooh, yep. Now let's turn up the resonance. I like this liquidy, can you hear? This liquidy sound. 
like a vowel. Wow, wow, wow. Now let's drive it. Okay, let's go back. Let's apply some more resonance. It goes way down there to sub. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just getting excited every time I'm using this filter. And now let's try the other. This is 12. No resonance. Now driven. More resonance. Driven. Now, even more resonance. Actually, I like it best when it's set just at the at this notch here, just above three o'clock. If you set it up to a full range, it will just scream and self-oscillate. Well, if you like it, it's of course cool, but it's more useful while in the oscillator mode. Okay, so let's go to the 18 dB per octave. Yet a different flavor. This is a pure, non-pushed version. Now let's drive it. Okay, let's dial it back a bit with the gain. Let's check out the most aggressive one. That's the 24 dB, 4 pole. That's the main core of the whole filter. That's without resonance. That's with a bit more resonance. Even more resonance. Oh yeah. Now let's drive it. There is some authority in this sound. <laughs> that is crazy! Okay, let's dial it back. Now let's check out the lower row. This is the high pass filter. No resonance. More resonance and more resonance. Let's drive it. Oh my god! Yep, that's what I call a pure raw electricity. Actually, speaking of pure raw electricity, this module reminds me a lot of Surge. I used to have a Surge system and it's really a lot of this kind of raw electrical sound which I was always missing after I sold it. And also it's similar to Surge because of its multifunctionality. It's one filter that could be in a CV processor, a filter, an oscillator, a lag processor and anything in between, just like the old Surge uh, designs. So it's really modern, but at the same time it draws a lot from the uh, great, great um, legendary designs like Surge. Okay, now we go to this strange boost and notch. So it boosts the uh, frequency just below the cutoff and then it cuts it just above. Yeah, that's also an interesting sound. Let's boost it. Yeah, those clicks. 
that's all this wobbly sound wobbles talking to us okay let's dial it back now the next filter this is a high pass with notch it sounds a bit like a one pole face shifter with the right modulation let's drive it this filter is that it's just the one huge sweet spot it doesn't have any uh, holes in it in the spectra except for the intended ones like with the notch for instance but uh, basically it just sounds awesome whenever you dial in it you just choose different colors but it doesn't sound weak or two-dimensional it's always full of life let's go with the uh, last output this is the uh, band pass Let's drive it a bit. Okay, so we have investigated the basic sound of the filter. Now let's check out some other options. First, let's try to emulate some classical sounds, like for instance, the TB303 acid filter, which was 18 dB per octave, which is the third output from the Lopas raw. So I input this here. And uh, what I have in here in the patch is PEG by 4MS animating my IntelliJ VCA. And uh, this uh, PEG is also fueled by uh, Eloquencer, which is providing the sequence for the Rubicon, which is the source. And I'm applying the same exact envelope to Exponential FM in. And that's how it sounds. Now you need to be really careful while setting the depth of the modulation together with the uh, filter cutoff and resonance. If you go past the three o'clock, it will just go berserk. So it's best to just stay around the three o'clock mark and fiddle with the FM depth. Now watch what will happen when I connect some audio modulation to volt per octave input. Uh, I'm connecting the 259 oscillator from feedback modules. And we get totally different. Some zappy crazy stuff. about some FM tones. The same IntelliJ Rubicon, then I have the Dixie connected to the uh, Exponential FM and I have both of them synchronized with the same clock and the same peg envelope. Now what I like to do in this mode is to apply pink to it because you get this nice transient with it. You get this punchy tone. So it's kind of like a percussive FM sound with a click, which I personally adore. And of course you can modulate the resonance, so it's more fun. So I'll just take 
a standard Batumi LFO wave. This is a triangle wave, I believe. And let's input this in the... Uh... So... And of course you can modulate it both ways. Fun. So we're combining. All of the modulations. Let's try to audio modulate the hold input with a DPO which uh, comes off the same envelope but different DCA. And if I change. Okay. As you can hear, it's just bonkers. One of my favorite patches is the talking filter, which sounds like this. Let's drive the filter a bit. The crucial thing is, what I'm doing here is I'm modulating the FM, the exponential FM, with external oscillator, in my case it's a Dixie. The crucial thing here is to set up the right resonance, again, around 3, and the right cutoff. And what's critical in here is the frequency of the uh, modulating oscillator. Okay, I'm failing with it. It's quite narrow. And of course the source material, the source signal should be, for instance, a ramp or sotho, so it's harmonically rich. And, and as you can hear, it talks to me. <laughs> My baby talks to me. It is freaky. It's late at night and this filter is talking to me and I'm freaking out a bit. But it just sounds awesome! My god, let me twist it a little bit more. Remember I told you about the other shapes you can achieve with the self-patching? Actually with making a feedback patch within the module? It's very simple. You take the signal out of the second Lopus output the uh, 12 dB per octave, or the one below. But then you take the bandpass and you connect it to the exponential FM. Now, let's see what happens. See? While adjusting the uh, modulation depth, we are achieving different sounds of the rectified sine wave. It sounds pretty darn good if you ask me. Alright? Simple as that. I haven't touched yet in depth on the uh, ping input, which could give you all sorts of percussive sounds and timbres. So let's check it out. If you want to activate it, you have to stick some trigger or gate in here. That's the first step. And then you have to engage the module into self-oscillation, just like you would do with the uh, oscillators. So around the 3 o'clock is the best point to start. And then... And then you adjust the frequency part. The uh, more amount of resonance, the longer the decay. I have put this through envelope and the VCA, so it's shorter. But you can hear, if I decrease the resonance, it becomes shorter. More clicky. So if I want to elongate it, I'll just 
put it into the max position and I can get some really deep fat kicks from it and of course the type of envelope you use with it plays a big role in it I'm using the peg which is also clicky therefore I'm getting a really great kick for any kind of electronic music which contains all the subs and uh, the meat but also is clicky so it cuts through a mix so there is not much need for layering of different kick sounds you already have the most important parts in it and of course different outputs will give you different responses if you connect to those lower ones you can get some more of a bongo and this of course begs for some reverb so I have here the new ZDSP Mark II multi-effect loaded with the Valhalla verbs and let's crank it up oh yes and again the less resonance the shorter it gets the more resonance the longer it gets and of course nothing stands in the way of modulating this pinged sound with any other sources just like we did it with the regular uh, waves so let's try it right now with the uh, Dixie Sounds lovely, doesn't it? Just another huge universe of sounds. So, the ping input, another great choice for a whole breed of new sounds. I think this is my favorite feature of it. As you can see. <laughs> Alright. 